Hey y'all, so I am a huge fan of fictional audio drama podcasts and I asked on Instagram if you would prefer recommendations for horror or sci-fi um, and sci-fi won literally by one vote uh, and so I'm going to be doing sci-fi first. I will do a horror podcast recommendation video sometime in the future but I know I will do it eventually. I already have like the list of podcasts I want to talk about for that video. Anyways, um, sci-fi yeah so the first podcast on the list is the bright sessions the bright sessions is a science fiction podcast that follows a group of therapy patients but these are not your typical patients each has a unique supernatural ability the show documents their struggles and discoveries as well as the motivations of their mysterious therapist dr bright um it's been a few years since I finished this podcast. I remember it being a really fun story about people with powers and there were queer characters and mm, mm, there was one of the characters has like the voice actor is like oh my god such a nice voice and it's the voice actor for Damien and I'm just like oh he's so stupid and he's so bad but he's so attractive and I'm like bro your voice anyways uh, <laughs> what was I talking about stop thirsting um there is so much content about people with superpowers and I feel like a lot of them do the same thing and neglect the possible stories that no one's ever done before. One being the exploration of someone's character um, and their adjustment to society through uh, the lens of a therapist. Like, I've, I've been saying that there should be stories like this, that there should be stories about people with superpowers going to therapy, because that shit can be fucking traumatic, you know, like when you first um, when your powers first emerge, like, what happens and how you try to control that or learn how to cope with that and, like, learning how to do it on your own is- is really fucking hard, especially for superheroes. Like, are you kidding me? I think that stories with superheroes should be especially, like, doing this because, like, being a superhero- how do you manage your PTSD, the other mental illnesses that would emerge uh, from being a superhero, uh, the stress of being a superhero, lying to people all the time, you know, like, they should be going to therapy and I think it'd be really interesting for people to be writing a story about them going to therapy. Um, I don't know why this hasn't been done yet. Anyway, back to the Bright Sessions. Um, I can't spoil the story, but I will say that you can expect it to go beyond um, character development within the context of therapy. It will go beyond that setting with a much larger story. I really liked each character and listening to like their struggles, um, just like as a person and also with their powers um, and how they... And then they become like friends and stuff and it's really great and then they come together and do things that I can't say because it's a spoiler but it's like um you can you can definitely expect some action in this podcast. The main podcast series has completed but there are two spin-off podcasts uh, both completed as well as two released novels and a third one coming out. Um, I personally am not interested in the spinoffs, um, both for the podcast and the books, but just letting you know in case, uh, you want to look into them. The next podcast is Mirrors. Mirrors. Mirrors? Mirrors. Oh my god. Why is that such a hard word? <laughs> um, this podcast actually just finished. And I'm really conflicted with the ending, but I would still recommend it to people, which is why I'm talking about it. Three women, three centuries, one haunting. That's it. That's the pitch for the podcast. So the story is about three women um, in completely different time periods and in different locations who all see the same ghost or supernatural being. They're not really sure what it is they're seeing. And for the audience, it's like, what are these beings? Why these three women? Um, why is this being still being seen by people after all these centuries? Mirrors was listed as a sci-fi horror for me, which I think is 
personally I think is incorrect. I think it's a sci-fi drama and it reminds me of the movie Arrival starring Amy Adams, which was a really interesting concept for a sci-fi movie about aliens because it wasn't about, like, it wasn't like an action movie about people fighting aliens or, you know, aliens trying to take over our world and it wasn't a horror or thriller about trying to survive um, an alien invasion. Instead, it was a movie grounded by science and trying to understand the arrival of these unfamiliar beings and trying to communicate with them. That being said, Mirrors does something very similar to that in the sense that all of them are trying to understand what is happening to them. Um, one of the characters is a scientific researcher, so there's a lot of like scientific uh, background stuff of them trying to understand what the fuck's going on. And other characters are also doing research as civilians with no scientific background. So you kind of get like a mix of both and it's just them using logic and science and the resources they have to try and figure out um, what these beings are and why they keep following them. I like the uniqueness of this story because it's very plot heavy for a sci-fi story um, and there's not a lot of action, it's a lot of dialogue. And the way it's set up and how calm the story is and the voice actors, um, you know, it was very relaxing and refreshing to listen to. Oh, I do want to say that one of the characters she literally talks like Donna Noble from Doctor Who. I'm just like, what is happening? It's like the same accent. I mean, obviously people, I think Donna Noble was from London, right? She has a London accent. I mean, obviously, so obviously people from that area would have the same accent, but I was just like, whoa, they sound the same. And it was just mind blowing for me. <laughs> This is a bit spoilery, but I do want to mention it because I was like, oh no, is this podcast indirectly transphobic? Um, and the answer is no, so I just want to address that. A theme or part of the story is that it is about women and that it is always women who experience this haunting, haunting, which, you know, obviously encounters this obstacle of like, oh, is this just for cisgender people? How does it work for non-binary people and for trans women? And so they do say in passing in season three that um, non-binary people and trans people um, are included in this phenomenon, which, you know, maybe they just realized down the road that they were indirectly being transphobic and they tried to um, make up for that by throwing in some references to trans and non-binary people. And I know that's kind of like a weak, I mean, an attempt is an attempt and I'm glad that they at least realized their mistake and tried to include trans and non-binary people in their story. The reason why I was conflicted about talking about this podcast was because I didn't like the ending. That could be in part because I had assumptions um, about what kind of story the podcast was going to tell. And when the podcast didn't uh, follow my assumptions and my expectations, I was disappointed. I won't say specifically what the ending is, but I wanted to disperse any assumptions you might have uh, because it might interfere with your overall enjoyment of the podcast. I had the assumption that because the plot had a focus on this huge sci-fi problem uh, that all the characters were facing, I assumed that there would be this huge, intense action uh, climax as they came to the conclusion of the story. And the podcast finale did not have that, which did leave me disappointed. But at the same time, the vibe of the podcast, having a huge action sequence wouldn't really mesh with the rest of the story. So I think it would have been odd if they did include that in the podcast anyway. But I'm also taking into consideration that maybe the writer's intention was to tell an emotional story and not this huge sci-fi drama that I was anticipating. So my point being, don't go into mirrors with the same expectations that I did. So the phenomenon I actually finished yesterday. Um, okay, so yeah, let me just tell you what it's about first. Uh, when a supernatural threat drives mankind to the point of extinction, survivors around the globe struggle to endure in a world with just three rules. Do not look outside. Do not look at the sky. Do not make noise. 
The Phenomenon is a fictional podcast with an international cast and rich sound design that follows people from around the world during a catastrophic extraterrestrial invasion. This podcast feels cinematic, which like, what does that even mean? I don't know. I just, I can't explain it, but cinematic just, it makes sense in my brain. It's like, yes, this podcast, cinema. <laughs> I don't know, but it is just a big story with really, really good sound effects and a large cast of characters that makes me feel like I'm watching a Hollywood movie and I don't feel that way with any other podcast. So like, okay, so listening to a podcast is certainly its own unique experience, right? But then when you, have you ever played a movie um, and you're not looking at the screen, but you're listening to the movie. That's what this podcast feels like. B but but this podcast was made intentionally to just be consumed um, with audio. So it's like different. It it's like better. Am I making sense? I don't know. It's cinematic. It's cinematic. And that's all I can say. <laughs> I personally have a soft spot for apocalyptic stories that uh, have POVs all around the world. And what I mean by that is like having POVs of people from different countries, or it might look like people from different countries coming together to combine resources to make a last stand, kind of like Pacific Rim. What I love is that the reoccurring characters, even the ones who feel like essential main characters, they are not safe. This podcast is not afraid of killing off people, which is so important in a story like this because there's just no fucking way you can get through a apocalypse without people dying. <laughs> that being said, there is a lot of death in this podcast and the deaths are so brutal. You will hear them screaming and you will hear what is being done to their body. So if bones breaking, if bodies being squashed or being manipulated in a way, <laughs> if that's not something you are interested in listening to, then this podcast is probably not for you. <laughs> but if you love brutal death during an apocalypse and really good sound design of people dying the way that I do, then this podcast is totally 100% probably going to be something you really like. I love the sound effects. Like, usually I feel like people make really gross deaths and it's like short, but it's just like, it's just so much in this podcast and it's like, wow. Ugh, wow. I just, I really admire artists who sound design, you know? I just, ugh. Art, art is so amazing. Ugh, I love artists. <laughs> oh, and the podcast also has like, sometimes they have like one-shot scenes of random people dying. And it's so sad. And it just, and it like, it's utilized as a tool to like, constantly instill fear in the audience and just remind us how dangerous this threat is and it's just like hearing these random people these random characters just die off and it's just it's like it's so sad i can't ex oh it's just so sad listening to them because they, they're they're so full of hope and the desperation in their voice and i'm like ah it's so good is so good. Um, unfortunately, there are no official content warnings that I could find on like episode descriptions or on their website, um, which really sucks. I feel like that's really essential. Maybe they didn't include it because, well, even if there is death in every episode, they should still include the warning. Um, I will say that there is one sex scene in episode four, I think, of season one, um, and it goes on for a little, like, maybe like a good 10 seconds of them um fucking so you know make sure you're wearing your headphones when you're listening to season one because you do not want people to be hearing that i also recommend listening to this podcast a few episodes a time because there's just so many characters and it's really hard to remember who is who if you're not listening to episodes back to back you know the adventure zone that's not how the tune goes <laughs> what am i doing uh, nope 
Okay, The Adventure Zone. Um, this was the first podcast I listened to, so, you know, this holds a very special place in my heart. This is a Dungeons & Dragons podcast, and there are three main D&D campaigns, and three from their experimental era, when they were still trying to figure out what their next main uh, campaign would look like. For people who are unfamiliar with Dungeons and Dungeons and Dragons, oh, blah, blah, blah. campaign just means a story or series of adventures with the same characters. So in this case, uh, Taz has three campaigns and they're not related and they're not in the same universe. So you don't have to, there's no like certain order of campaigns you need to listen to. You can just pick one and listen to it. Also, if you're unfamiliar with D&D, do not let this intimidate you. Honestly, I feel like Taz is like the best way to get into Dungeons and Dragons because they're like, they're not serious about D&D and they're just comedians and they're having a good time and it's like, ha! And you don't have to understand any of the D&D technical stuff to actually understand what the fuck they're doing. I think that the way that the McElroys approach D&D and how they are throughout the episode, I think that they just make it really accessible to people who don't know anything about D&D. Ooh, and some characters are queer too in, ev in every campaign. I will list off the genres for the podcast as a whole uh, because there's a lot and I just pulled it off of Wikipedia because the way they listed it is really funny so let me just let me just read it. Uh, comedy, supernatural, adventure, fantasy, science fantasy, science fiction, mystery slash detective, steampunk on occasion, urban fantasy, sometimes, superhero, maybe, possibly, western, but just that once. So now I'm going to talk about the three main campaigns in The Adventure Zone. In Taz Balance, the characters are on a quest to find, capture, and destroy the immensely powerful grand relics to prevent them from being used for evil. But beware, not all is as it seems. At first, balance follows what I would call the traditional setting for D&D. And by traditional, I just mean goblins and swords and adventure. But after the first arc, there's like an Agatha Christie inspired arc. Um, and there's like this, there's like this heist um, race car one that reminds me of Mad Max Fury Road. And it all leads up to this very complex story that I had no idea a D&D &D podcast would have. Lastly, there is an ongoing graphic novel series for Taz Balance. Um, I think it's on the fourth or fifth novel, and I'm really hoping that they're also gonna do a graphic novel series for Taz Amnesty, but we will see, I guess. Speaking of Taz Amnesty, it is the next campaign that I'm going to talk about, and it is my favorite campaign out of the three. Fate brings together three seemingly normal people to fight off the evil that's plaguing the town of Kepler, West Virginia, a crypto-zoological tourist trap, and a very small skiing town, and Sylvain, a planet full of magical beings that is mysteriously linked to Kepler by a stone archway. So Taz Amnesty has a much more modern setting with magical creatures and cryptids. Taz Amnesty and Gravity Falls, they just go together. Like, like the cozy vibes, the small town in the woods, the tourist traps, the friendly monsters, the bad monsters, the cryptids, the friendships. It's, they're like, they're very similar in a way and I just love the vibes from both of them. And I also really love that it was in a modern setting, which I didn't know D&D &D could do. You know? I guess my assumption of D&D &D was that it always had to be in a traditional setting with like dragons and swords and whatnot. So like when I listened to Amnesty and it was like a modern setting with like cars and shit, I was like, whoa, I love this. I really love the characters and like their friendship and their dynamics and their history and the cryptids and ugh, the, the idea of monsters living in our world and just existing and adapting to our culture and then also influencing our culture and there's like a cabin that's like a safe house for magical creatures and cryptids and it's like they're there and they're like a, they're living together and it's like a family and, and ah, it, it's just such a good concept I love Taz Amnesty. Uh, Taz graduation is currently ongoing um, 
the graduation arc focuses on three students newly enrolled in the Annex Sidekick Program at Hieronomics Wiggenstaff's School of Heroism and Villainy. Essentially, in this world, there's a school where you can train to be a villain, hero, or sidekick, and then you get like a license for that to be your career. And so it's like, well, why train villains in the first place, right? The answer is capitalism. <laughs> you can profit off of heroes, and if you train and manage the villains, you can set them up in a way where the villains can profit and the capitalists can profit. Well, yeah, capitalism is the villain in the real world. Um, but you know what I mean. <laughs> I haven't listened to this arc in a very long time, so maybe I'm just making that up. But I also wouldn't put it past Travis to make this a commentary about capitalism. I don't know. It's in my head for some reason, so it has to be there for a reason, right? Right? I can't say much about this campaign simply because I haven't really listened to it yet. I only listened to like three episodes, um, and that's not enough for me to say much about it. So, mission to Zix. Okay, I left the best podcast for last. Um, an improvised science fiction sitcom following a team of ambassadors as the attempt to establish diplomatic relations with planets in the remote and chaotic Zix Quadrant, better known as the ass end of space. <laughs> improv. Improv. Wow. Wow. They make a coherent story with a guest star in every episode. And they're doing improv. Like, how do you do that? And so, from what they've said, um, they outline beforehand the general idea of what they want the episode to look like, and, and sometimes that decision is influenced by the guest star, because the guest star gets in complete creative control over what kind of character they want to play, and so they kind of have to, like, come to a conclusion together as to what they want to do in the episode. I love this podcast. Like, I don't even know why, you know? Like, if you ask me why I like the Magnus Archives, I can explain in detail what, why I like it, you know? But Mission is X, I'm just like, I love it, and I- I, there's no reason, but I just love it. I love the vibe of the cast. I love their stupid, dorky humor. And maybe I love them because they're all just a bunch of fucking geeks. I don't know. Zix is heavily inspired by Star Wars and Star Trek. So if you know your lore, you can spot so many fucking references throughout the entire series. I literally have a mission of Zix alarm like, alarm sound, I have a ringtone, and I have a text tone from Mission to Zix, is, oh, oh, in the text tone, the text, one of the cast members, one of the cast members, uh, Jeremy Bent, he plays a robot, but listen, 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 his, his real voice, oh, it's so good, it's so nice, and I have his voice as my ringtone. <laughs> Yeah, but I don't really like this podcast just because I thirst over Jeremy Bent's voice. Like I have, I have legitimate reasons as well. <laughs> I love, I love everyone else too. You know, it's not just him. And yeah, Jeremy Bent is one of the people on my voice actor thirst list, uh, along with Peter J. Lewis. Oh, and I love, I love Alden Ford's voice. He plays Pleck Deck Sutter, and I'm just like, oh my god, I love Pleck. Pleck is me. Pleck is me. Oh my god. Ugh. Jeremy Bent and then Alden Ford's voice, they're like, they're completely two different ends of the spectrum of voices, but I love them both so much. <laughs> and then Mujon and Winston, they're two other main cast members, but then they also do additional voices for like random characters and it's like their voices are so fucking versatile and they can do so many sounds and it's like whoa how do you do that they could do so many things with their voice and it's so cool oh my god and also like it's improv comedy amongst friends and so you could just like feel the the energy in the room as they're trying to like <sighs> I'd like, you know, you know the energy I'm talking about, like when you're in the room with some people and you're always, la you've been laughing for like the past 30 minutes because you're just having a really good time. That's the energy you feel throughout this entire show because that's exactly what they're doing as they're filming it, recording it. And you could always hear them trying not to laugh. Like you can tell that they're smiling as they're acting and 
sometimes you could just hear them laughing in the background because they move away from their microphone and like you couldn't edit it out. It is just, I cherish those moments so much because it's like, I feel like I'm laughing with them. Like I'm in the room with them and I'm trying not to laugh and I'm laughing with them. It just feels like a connective, connected experience with the cast members and I really love it. The plot is really stupid and silly, but it's like so entertaining. But like, why? <laughs> I don't know why, but Mission is X just works. It just works. When you first listen to it, it's like, there's gonna be an actual plot? What? Because it's just so silly from all the improv. Because when you first start the podcast, it just feels like it's going to be one-shot adventures in space with this group of people. <laughs> um, then, you know, it actually builds up to a plot, which is weird to me. And it's still weird to me because I'm just like, they're actually doing things. It... Again, the fact that this is improv is just so wild to me. Um, yeah, and I, I love... I love that podcast. I saved it to be the last one because it's the best recommendation for sci-fi that I can give you. Actually, actually, the whole reason I have a sci-fi pod recommendations video is literally for Mission to Six. And I was like, okay, let me scan through my brain to find uh, other sci-fi stories that I can recommend. I also wanted to mention some podcasts that I want to get into or I have tried and it wasn't really for me, but it might be for you. So yeah, this is the next list. It's gonna be very short. Um, I'm just gonna like read the summaries of each podcast. Okay, so Vast Horizon. Nalira is an agronomist tasked with establishing agriculture in a new solar system, but when she wakes up on a now empty colony ship, the whole of her plan disappears. The ship has been set adrift with numerous mission-critical problems requiring immediate attendance outside of her area of expertise. Nalira is aided by the ship's malfunctioning AI, which acts as her confidant and companion during the fight for survival. The Liberty Podcast. Welcome to the world of liberty. Serialized sci-fi tales told audio drama podcasts. For centuries, the colony of Atreus has been cut off from humanity and endured generations of civil war. What remains is a gleaming city, and beyond its walls, a lawless expanse known as the Fringe. The Penumbra Podcast. Welcome, traveler. At the Penumbra, you might follow Juno Steele, a brooding, sharp-witted private eye on Mars, as he untangles with an elusive home fatal. Home fatal? Home... Fuck, I should have googled it before. Shit. French. I think it's French, I don't know. <laughs> um, tracks dangerous artifacts of an ancient alien civilization and faces his three greatest fears, heights, blood, and relationships. Or you might enter the world of Second Citadel, where the merciless Sir Caroline must corral a team of emotional distraught all-male knights to defend their city against mind-manipulating monsters, even the ones they've fallen in love with. I also wanted to say for this one that I believe that there are queer, no, 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 I know there are queer relationships, but I believe there is non-binary main characters who are also in relationships with other people. The last one is Our Fair City, set in a future dystopian version of Hartford CT. What CT? Is it Cincinnati? Is this a, Cincinnati's not a state. What am I talking about? <laughs> Cincinnati's a city, right? Connecticut. Hartford, Connecticut. Is that a real city? I don't know. Anyway, Set in a future dystopian version of Hartford, Connecticut, following a climate change-related disaster, humanity is now confined to subterranean cities. Heart Life, an insurance company, now runs the lives of all policies in the city. Lightning rigs high above the city gather from thunderstorms. Mad scientists walk the earth, and adorably monstrous mole people dig tunnels deep underground to expand the city's habitable space. This reminds me of that one movie with Sir Ronan. Um, City of... No, no, that wasn't that. No, I was going to say City of Brass. That's totally wrong. <laughs> um, what movie am I thinking of? City of Ember. Yeah. City of Ember. That's also based off of a book. And it also kind of reminds me of Bioshock, which, you know, Bioshock 4 is going to take place underground, so really reminds me of Bioshock. 
Um, yeah, anyways, um, that was all the podcast recommendations I have, uh, for science fiction, drama podcast, that's all I have, uh, for sci-fi podcasts, video, that's all I have for this sci-fi podcast, for, I just said the same thing, brain, hello, hello, let me know if you try, if you want to try out some of these podcasts or if you have listened to them especially if you like mission to zix because i love mission to zix and i would like to know if other people like it too um, <laughs> or if you have any recommendations for sci-fi podcasts that i haven't mentioned um in this video or in any previous videos i always like looking into podcasts so please let me know yeah and uh consider liking and subscribing oh, i hate saying this but consider liking and subscribing if you enjoy this content because it helps boost up my engagement and promotes my videos to other people. And now I am 15 minutes away from a meeting with some friends that I'm going to be doing in 15 minutes, which I just said, just stop talking. Okay, thank you for watching the video. Um, good night, goodbye. Okay, I'm done. <laughs> <laughs>